Hi there, folks. This is Broke Astronomer. My name is Mike, and this is February 21st, 2022. And this is what is going on out there. So what is going on out there? Let's go through the first article that I found. Now, this is various articles that I personally have found interesting that I wish to share. This is not necessarily the most pressing issues. This is not something that maybe you find the most interesting. This is just, you know, things that uh, when I read about them, I thought, you know, this is really kind of neat. I want to share this. I should make a video about this. Metal clouds and liquid gems spotted in the atmosphere of, I don't really like the way that the headline is titled here, metal clouds of hot Jupiter. Hot Jupiter is, what they mean by this is it's a gas giant like Jupiter that is hot because it's really close to its sun. Now this specific one they call WASP-121b. And there we have it. The strange weather was found in the first detailed study of the exoplanet's dark side. So what we're looking about at above here, this is WASP-121b. This is WASP-121. Imagine a world where the clouds are made of metal and liquid rubies and sapphires rain down from the sky. A new study shows that on hot Jupiter exoplanet wasp 121b this could be the reality so let me uh give you the cliff notes this exoplanet here you see wasp 121b is 880 light years from earth that is how far light travels in 880 years this alien world a class of gas giant that has physical similarities to jupiter but orbit their stars much closer as you can see here. This strange discovery, research have further explored this world and its strange atmosphere. We'll use strange a couple more times in the article. I'm not sure who wrote this article, but it's strange that they strangely use the word strange a strange number of times. Using the Hubble Space Telescope, and again, I think that's quite interesting that you know the Hubble Space Telescope was supposed to have been destroyed, allowed to burn up in the atmosphere, decommissioned all the things they it died and they weren't going to fix it and that yet they did there was an outcry people uh, really loved the space telescope they really wanted to see more things from it there was um, an effort to fix everything a, a shuttle i think it was a shuttle mission went up there and replaced a bunch of stuff and fixed a bunch of stuff and rerouted some things and now it should be good to go and yet now look we're we're getting more out of it look how much stuff we're learning still using the space telescope and the, so this, as we see here, is tidally locked, which means the same side always faces the sun. This, the side here you see glowing in the sun's brightness is right here. All of this, I think it was 5,600 degrees Fahrenheit is the temperature that I think I just read a little bit ago, 5,400. So they say that this side here was 5,400 degrees Fahrenheit. And then over here is about half of that amount. Okay, the dark side. And when you have a hot side and a dark side, you get a lot of wind, okay? And it blows all the way around and keeps the current going. So that means that the things that cool off on the dark side are being pushed around to the day, day side to heat up again, cool down, heat up, cool down, etc. And one of the things that they get from this is essentially an atmosphere of gaseous metal. Metal clouds will blow to the planet's day side and evaporate, condense back on its night side, and so on. But metal clouds aren't the only strange phenomena these researchers spotted. They also found evidence of possible rain in the form of liquid gems. Isn't that cool? The metal vapor condensed into metallic rain would see aluminum condensed together with oxygen, forming corundum, corundum, 
corundum, corundum, whatever it is. This metallic compound that when tainted by other metals suspected in the planet's atmosphere would form what we know on earth as rubies or sapphires, according to the statement. And I just think that's really, really cool. I mean, I don't know what else to say about that. That's some freaking good stuff right there. So I just thought this was cool. I mean, can you imagine liquid gems raining down from the sky or in metal clouds? All right, well, we're going to talk a little bit about a subject that I'm not too happy to talk about, which is more Starlink satellites. But that's not the part of this article that I found interesting or the part that I cared about, because, of course, as someone who likes to take pretty pictures of the night sky, I don't like these stupid satellites in my way. And I'm very upset with Elon Musk and his nonsense of putting these Internet satellites up there so what we can have internet i mean destroying the night sky so that he can make more money selling internet service i just wish somebody would have told him no so the part about this article that i found actually interesting is this the hundredth time part so it was i think six was it six years ago six years ago we had the first successful landing of falcon 9 let's go check it out for a second And today's stage one leg to play. Down on a short fall right, of gravitas. We also heard, there it is on your screen. Incredible view of the vehicle standing that tall. Insertion. And, and we also had Seco 1 as well as that call out right there. The Let us know that ship. we had a good orbit. So cool stuff. I just thought that was interesting. 100 and you know how time flies. Congratulations, I suppose. I wish you would stop putting satellites in my way, especially ones I don't care about. You know, they're not doing anything for me. I mean, if you want to put GPS satellites up there, That'll, that'll work. That'll make my, uh, my GPS navigation in my car better as far as giving people internet access, something that we don't need, something that's probably a detriment to society to begin with. I'm sorry, but um, if I could figure out how to snap my fingers, Thanos snap, and all the Starlink satellites fall out of the sky, I would do it. Now, I'm going to hit you guys with two stories that are related-ish. So the James Webb Space Telescope, you know, they're going to say things like this that's going to drive me nuts, but might be able. Oh, that's a sore spot for me. It honestly is. But anyways, it's going to detect or they wanted to see if they can detect other civilizations by their air pollution. So the question that I would have is a lot of our progress came from burning of fossil fuels. We have fossil fuels because of amount of life and the size of life that had died and decomposed in the soil, so to speak, you know, became that's why they call it fossil fuels. It's from that abundance of life, early earth, millions and millions and millions and millions of years ago that now give us basically coal and oil. So that is what we burned to start our civilization. Do other planets, do they have resources like that that would pollute their planet and therefore allow the James Webb Space Telescope to actually see that? That's that's a lot of ifs, and but we're going to get into that in the next article. We still have a wait to see what they do with the James Webb Space Telescope. I'm still very pessimistic when it comes to the capabilities of this telescope and if it'll actually do the things that they want it to do. I just think it's an overly engineered, overly complicated telescope. But then again, the Hubble, which is with its simple design, was a failure at launch and they had to go up and fix it because the idiots don't know what the hell they're doing and they don't know how to do math, apparently, and figure out how to correctly shape the mirrors and optical surfaces of the Hubble Space Telescope, and they had to send up a corrective lens to fix it. I mean, it's just, who the hell was in charge of that? Just, it's, oh, God. 
the incompetency sometimes. I'm going to go off on a tangent if I if I don't move on. Anyways, yeah, they just want to point it out there. They want to look at the planets. They want to see if they can detect chemicals in the atmosphere that would indicate that there's some sort of at least intelligent enough to burn fossil fuels. But how do you differentiate that between that and a forest fire or something I, or, or a volcanic eruption? I guess there are specific molecules that they would see. We produce chemicals that fill our atmosphere with compounds that otherwise be present. These artificial atmospheric constituents just might be the thing that gives us away to a distant alien species scanning the galaxy with their own powerful telescope. Now, when you are on this kind of a website where they're, okay. I have to calm down. Serenity now. Serenity now. This is, these people are the result of the current education system in this country where the special snowflakes are allowed to graduate without understanding of, in this case, mathematics. So I look at the name of the website and I have to ask, how does Scott Allen Johnson from Universe Today, how does this person write an article that says this? And how does phys, I'm assuming physics.org, pick up this article and put it on their website with this statement? Let me see if I can find it again. These artificial atmospheric constituents might or just might be the thing that gives us, meaning Earth, a way to a distant alien species scanning the galaxy with their own powerful telescope. Am I the only one that sees the flaw here? Let me explain it for you guys wondering what the hell I'm talking about. When these so-called artificial atmospheric constituents would have been in the atmosphere of our planet day one in numbers great enough to have been seen by anything outside of our own solar system even how long ago was that 100 years do we go 200 years when were these artificial things in our atmosphere how long ago did it start how fast does light go how far would this would this have have to have traveled through space for another civilization somewhere far, far away with their telescope looking at our planet and go, hey, Earth has these things. If we're only done doing this for a couple hundred years at most, where would these people be? How close would they have to have already been? You see what I'm getting at here? Now, if you say a couple thousand years from now that our light gets to some of the more nearby solar systems, traveling at the speed of light and they can look, turn around and look and they see it and they go, Oh, looks like several thousand years ago, they had stuff in the atmosphere that we could see, but we've only been doing this a hundred, 200 years. How stupid is this point? But besides that, we can still see ancient civilizations that are thousands, tens of thousands, millions of years old, hundred thousands, millions of years old. If they ever had that stage where they were burning, polluting, doing whatever with these artificial molecules and compounds and you know whatever it is that gets up into our atmosphere and makes a difference between the natural type of pollution again volcanoes burning forests coal on fire natural gas on fire so just a few days ago we had a rather large prominence or i guess you'd say coronal mass ejection on the opposite side of the sun from us, thankfully. Now there's a short story by Larry Niven that I enjoy quite a bit. It's called Inconstant Moon. It's out there on the internet, free to read. I suggest you all read it. It's actually a really cool story. And it's about something similar to this, which is the sun ejecting a lot of material directly at the earth. And it's, it's a scary thing to think about. But my understanding is that there, at least his explanation in the book, was that the moon has evidence that it has happened in previous times, and there are melted moon rocks on like one surface, one side of the rock is melted, the other side isn't, indicating that this type of hot plasma ejection had reached as far as our own earth and moon, and at least was hot enough to melt moon rock. So this is not something that we should take lightly. It could, in fact, wipe 
most of us out. Not all of us probably, but most of us out if it were to hit us. It would be a very bad thing. But this one probably wasn't as bad. But it says, luckily for here, us here on Earth, the eruption on February 15th, 2022 occurred on the far side of the sun. But the storms, which I guess are significant right now, let's, in fact, let's move over to, what is it called? Space weather and see what space weather has for us. Okay, so we're over here on spaceweather.com and it says emerging sunspots, additional sunspots are emerging over the northeastern limb of the sun as solar rotation turns the source of last week's huge explosion towards Earth. So far, the ensemble of spots does not appear capable of a repeat performance. Soon we will have a better idea of the magnetic complexity and potentially and potential for strong flares. Stay tuned, solar flare alerts, SMS text, you can get that. And then this over here is always a, a live-ish representation of where the solar spots are. There, there's a big area right there, it looks like. If you have a solar telescope or a solar filter for the way that in which you want to view the sun, you could potentially point your telescope at that and see for yourself. Now, obviously you have to have a filter for visual or a filter for camera. It is important that you have the correct filtering. You cannot look directly at the sun with anything, okay? Uh, I know that there's some do-it-yourself hacks and how to do this, something about using old film. I mean, there's whole kinds of stupid stuff. Don't do any of it. Get the correct real filter material. I personally like the Bader film. I don't have any anymore. Actually, I do, but I don't. You don't trust it more after you've opened it and used it. You pretty much have to throw it away because a pinhole will destroy your eyes. So you can't, you, even things you can't see, little holes inside the material from just flexing and whatever, and it makes a little deterioration of a certain spot of the filter, it can destroy your eyes. Don't ever risk it. And then of course you need a special filter if you're gonna use a camera, that kind of a thing. Big, big, massive solar flare. And here is a Twitter post from, um, what was it say, Keith Strong. He posted this on Twitter recently. This down here looks like a side-by-side -side eruption. Let's watch this one. Uh, it doesn't say that it's on, oh yeah, watch on YouTube. So we'll do that. Give me a second to load it up. All right, let's give this a look. Man, look at that. It's just repeating over and over to the same thing. It, it's not continuing to do this, it's just repeat, it's a loop. So that is pretty cool stuff. And it is not fun. Guys, look at that. Bad news, bad news. You don't want that pointed at you. So an update to last week's or whatever it was when I did my previous episode of what's going on out there, I mentioned that the Space Web Telescope, it had the 18 points of light and they would they have to tilt all the mirrors to figure out which one, which of the light is corresponded to which mirror and then they will adjust them. This is the first step or something like maybe the, one of the first steps that they had to do, which was bring it all into this octagon formation as I'm reading the word right here in front of me, formation. So once they do that, then they start bringing them two, 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 until it's gonna be a single point and that's what they're gonna try to do. So this was just simply a picture of that exact thing, which is all of the 18 points. And these ones, these ones, I mean, okay, some of these look okay. Like that one right here, that my mouse is pointing, that one looks okay to me. Like some of these look like one, I'm gonna say which ones I think look good. One-ish, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I find that six of the 18 actually look like I would predict they should look. These ones out here that are like way off, man, and this one right here, and this one maybe even, I don't know. They just don't look good. I, I We have to have hope. I don't have any. When you can see the spikes, like see how perfect the spike is on this one? Like one, it's almost like a Batnov mask. Boom, boom, boom. It's perfect, right? This one is really close too. But when you have ones that are all askew and weird, like I, I, I really worry. I worry. But I'm a very, I'm very pessimistic when it comes to the James Webb Space Telescope. I, I don't see that's what the first one looked like that I showed you guys previously. Now they've, like I said, they've, they've messed with them and they brought them into this pattern. So we're getting closer. Next stage, we'll get them, you know, really close and then they'll be lined up. 
And also, we are going to uh, catch you up on last week's episode, where I said that first of it was it was SpaceX that was blamed for the piece of space debris that was going to hit the moon. Then they found out it was China, and then this article here on the twenty first yesterday, China deny China denies making space junk set to crash into the moon. Of course they do. That's all I'm going to say about that. Of course they do. they deny everything, right? It's never China's fault. To continue to you know, pick on China a bit here. China, look at this. This is their starship lookalike. Now, as I've always said, certain civilizations invent and create and certain ones just steal it. To be blunt, they just steal it. As I was saying, okay, so now we're gonna get back to James Webb for the last news article I wanna cover today. Astronomers scan the center of the Milky Way looking for sign of intelligent civilizations, but finding nothing but silence. Now, this does not surprise me because let's talk about this. And I would like you guys to please comment in the comment below. I would like you to subscribe and hit the notification bell. But then when you're done doing that, please go below and comment. And the subject that I want to like to talk about in the comment section is this. Do you think that there is an advanced intelligent, obviously those go hand to hand, hand in hand, spacefaring alien species out there to discover now sure the math might say in the whole universe there might be some out there but i think that there is a false equivalency when you think intelligent life and technical technologically advanced life because there are cultures and peoples and countries on our planet right now that have the benefit of other countries like the U.S. developing advanced technologies, going into space, building a space program, and yet they want nothing to do with it at all. So, and then you have countries, as I want to dovetail in with China borrowing from the look of star of starship they don't if left to their own devices it would take a, a couple more centuries before they would even get to this point because if they can't steal advanced technology they there's something they just can't do it on their own they have to steal it they have to see what other people are doing and they take it and this has been a common theme for quite a while now that it is the West that invents and it's the East that steals it. I, I just don't know. And it, when you consider the evolution of the human species and the chance, basically if we've had several mass extinction level events on earth over the, over its entire history, resetting life back to zero again. And I'm not talking about the dinosaur meteor because that didn't reset the zero it just killed off everything bigger than a monkey. So if it wasn't for Jupiter scooping up asteroids and meteors and comets and whatever else out there in space, if it wasn't for those resets to give a different pathway of life where it would originally have gone compared to where it ended up, if the meteor had not hit the Yucatan Peninsula 65 million years ago and wipe out all the dinosaurs, would we be here? You know, all these chances that we've had and, and just the, the fact that at any point the earth could be destroyed. We just saw that coronal mass ejection. If it was a little bit stronger and aimed at the earth, what would have happened? You know, it's it's difficult to get your society to a point where you could, your civilization to a point where you could develop spacefaring vehicles, advanced communication, all these things. You know, you it's not easy to do. And yet we have civilizations, communities countries, tribes of what we consider an intelligent species on our earth that would not, they don't want anything to do with technology, let alone advanced technology. Think of some of these tribes of down in South America, some of these ones that live on remote islands, you know, they, they shoot arrows and throw spears at any, anyone who shows up in a boat or a helicopter or whatever. They want nothing to do with you. If that is human intelligence, realized but having a culture of zero interest in in pro progressing 
doing anything. Like, how do you not want a Hershey bar? You know, how do you not, how do you not want to have advanced ways of doing anything? You would ask them, how, how would, how would you live without electricity and clean water and a sewage system and you know all the things? Well, they, they just don't care. If there are intelligent species out there on other planets, who's to say they would care about developing an advanced civilization? This does not surprise me. This does not surprise me at all. Silence. I really, this is, I'm really pessimistic when it comes to this whole idea of aliens. If there are visitors to our planet, if these things that we're seeing on Joe Rogan and all that, talking about, you know, the, the Navy tracking things that do things. You, I, I would lean more towards visitors from parallel dimensions before I would say they're from advanced, you know, pro, they're advanced probes from another part of the galaxy coming to check on us. I, I just don't think that that's true. Both are, both are nonsense. I'm saying both are nonsense, not happening. What I am saying is if I were to have to pick between the reality of advanced aliens visiting us, even if it's in robotic probe format, not actual living entity within those ships, it's just a drone versus parallel dimension hopping, I would lean towards parallel dimension hopping. The life is coming from here or the visitors are coming from this planet, just not on our dimension. There you go. That's what I would say. And so this article just goes on. We've looked all these different places and, and silence and silence. And with that, I'm out of here, guys. Please comment below on the question of is there advanced societies out there, advanced civilization, spacefaring civilization, or do you think that there are intelligent life out there? They just don't care. They don't want to. They're fine with doing their own thing, and they're not, um, they're not going to develop spaceships, or they don't have the resources to do that. They're intelligent. They just don't have resources to make it happen. Start the debate. See what I want to hear what you guys have to say down there. And with that, uh, please like, comment, subscribe, as I said, and I will see you next time. Clear skies.